Hey there guys, TC Made with TC Gaming. Wanted to bring you another video in the RPG series. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, something called Set Timer with uh, by Function. Set Timer by Function. If you right click uh, anywhere in a, in a blueprint, you can say Set Timer by Function. You'll see it pop up by Function name. So what we would use this for in a lot of different cases is uh, something like we talked about before. I want to go backwards a little bit. We had this this uh, function that we had created um, in our AC attributes called add health. Um, if you remember correctly, this was out in our RPG content. We had an AC attributes. That's an actor component that was tied to our Greystone player character. And in one of the videos, I just had a little thing where I pressed the J key and it goes and adds health. And what I want to think about here for a second is that in this add health function, it just grabs in whatever the add amount was. And technically, what you can do is you can pass negative values into that also and take health away. So what I want to do is I want to kind of explore that a little bit and think about the fact that instead of calling this add health or subtract health or add mana, subtract mana, what we should really probably do is try and rename these to modify health. So let's see if we can go in here and say rename. And let's call this modify health. And then what we want to do over here is instead of this add amount variable that we had, why don't we call this, let's compile it, why don't we call this um, just simply amount and see if it will allow us to do that. We save it here. So now that's in the, in the variable like that. And now we have modify health, and if we come back over here, we have modify health and we have amount. So what that means is if I send a negative or a positive number in there, uh, we can show that here. Here's our negative 50, so if I go out to uh, the player character. Now remember, I had it set up that if I went into this cube, if I hit I, it would show me my amount. So now if I, I'm pressing the J key a couple of times, and I'll hit I, and you can see that it's actually taking health away because I have put a negative value in this modify health. Okay, so what would I use that for? Well, if all of the things that we do for our attributes and everything, we use modify and then positive and negative values, what we can do very simply is we can create some simple functions to add regen or to add um, something that would deteriorate uh, value over time. For example, if we wanted to turn this into like a survival RPG and we wanted to have a value in here where we would subtract a, let's say, a thirst value, we could go into our attributes over here and we could go and create a new variable, right? Because we had this S attributes thing as our, as our thing. So let's go over here and we'll grab one and we'll hit plus over here and we'll call this thirst, for example. And our type over here, we were going to make this a struct for uh, attributes, I think actually a structure. I think, you just, I think we just typed in attributes, and it should call up s attributes right there. So if we compile and save that, we see that we have a thirst value over here, and we have a base a modifier, multiplier, etc. And um, I think in most of these we just left these at zero values, right? And then we would set them at runtime based on different different things that our character has or doesn't have or whatever. So in this case, I'm just going to, for now, in our thirst module um, on our character over here, I will go in AC attributes, and I'll pull up his thirst, and I'll just say his base value would be 100. I can do this right on the character. Okay, so now if I wanted to have something over here that modified that value, we could do what we did in this other one, like we have a modify health, we could have one to modify thirst, right? So very quickly, I could just take um, all of these parameters that are here and just pull all this over. I'm just going to slide that out of the way. I'll grab all of this. And I can go in here and add a new function. And this new function is going to be called modify thirst. Capital M in there. And in our modify thirst, we'll just hit control V. And we'll pull this in here to set a value. And then coming off of here, we just had the same thing we did before. 
we have a uh, return node that comes off here. And did I break that? Here's modify thirst there, and this usually this comes out to a return node. And I'll do the same thing here. Compile, save that, and modify health. Or should have the same thing in there. So this one, instead of um, being our health variable, we would just pull this off and say get thirst. And then we would break this. Oop. I wanted to break that attribute. Yeah, get thirst. Break S attributes here. And then we're going to do the same thing. We just take this base value and send it up into here. So I'm just replacing these. And over here, this is going to be set thirst. And we can also split that struct pin. And we would do the same thing. This is just going to go up into our thirst base value like we did on the other one. And then we'll just delete that. So this will go into there and into here. Okay, and our modify, compile and save. Our input on this for modify thirst is going to be the same as what we did on health. We'll have a, let's go amount. And that is going to be a float. And we should be able to compile and whoop, why is it not let me do that? Amount. And change that to a float. Okay, so very similar to what we had last time. Just again, we're doing a modify. And now if I were to call this setup we can go back to graystone and instead of calling modify health off the ac attributes we'll call this uh, modify modify thirst and so i'll delete this one and put that back into here and then let's just say we're going to modify this value by negative one and if I pulled up back onto my I key, I was showing, you know, a print string off my other attribute over there. So we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to pull this out. And this is just going to be our thirst value. So we'll get that thirst. And then we are going to split that struct pin. And we'll just run our base value into here. I'm just modifying what it is that we're looking at in here, basically. That's all we're doing. Compile that and save. Okay. So if you're with me so far, what I'm doing is we're going to say show base thirst. So if I hit the I key, I'm going to show whatever my base thirst value is. And every time I press J, I'm going to modify my thirst by negative one. So I go in here and I hit the I key. That's my thirst at 100. I hit the J and then hit I again. Let's see, why is that doing that? Am I using the right key? Hold on. Okay, the reason that that's not working right now is because, oh, grab the wrong key here, because uh, in our AC attributes, when I pulled all this around, we're not setting this amount over here because we want to say our amount is going to be added to whatever the current thirst value is. So let's go back and do that again. And when we hit I, we see our 100, which is our thirst value. I hit J one time and hit I again, I've got 99. I hit J a couple times, I'm down to 97. J a few more times, I'm down to 91. So we're taking negative values off of our thirst over here. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create a simple function inside of here. And in, in another episode, we'll talk about some ways to turn these off and on, like using Boolean values. Real quick, the idea would be you could check a, a switch and say, does this character have, you know, do I want to use the thirst, or do I want to use hunger, or do I want to use, you know, mana? 
And if you flip these switches off and on, you could evaluate if you are using it, do you want to use regen, you know, and so on and so forth. So we could we could set all that up, uh, but I'm not going to talk about all that tonight. What I want to talk about here is just a real quick thing. So in our functions, I'll go in here and I'll create a new function, and I'm just going to call this, like, deteriorate and uh, deteriorate thirst. Or you could call it deplete thirst, or let's call it drain. Maybe drain is better because we could drain mana, drain health, drain whatever. So we'll call this drain thirst. And on our drain thirst function, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out that AC attributes, just like we did out here uh, in the Greystone player character. We're basically just going to take this right here. And we'll go into drain thirst. We'll paste that in. And all Drain Thirst is going to do is add the return node there. All Drain Thirst is going to do is every time I call Drain Thirst, I want to take one off my amount. Okay. Now what we can do, we have a function now that's going to modify this thirst. So what we can do is out in our event graph, we could say we want to set a timer by function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here into our event begin play. And we'll just put a, uh, a, not a branch, but we'll put a sequence in here. And what a sequence will let you do is it'll do like, you know, do these things and do these other things. So what we'll do is after it fires off the sequence to do all this stuff, we'll just come over here. And we'll say set timer by function name. Okay. And our function name in here is going to be called drain thirst so you could get um, since since this function is on the current character we shouldn't need to do anything with this object if it was somewhere else I think you need to reference it but I'm going to say the function name is called drain thirst and we want to say we want to loop that and we want it to do it every one second let's say and we'll compile that and save it. And now what should happen is when I hit play, I'm just going to hit I. And I'll keep hitting I. And we can see I'm not hitting J anymore. I'm not, I'm not decrementing that value. I'm just letting this thing run down naturally. So what's actually happening is that timer, this set timer by function name is calling the drain thirst every one second. Now, if you want to slow the drain down, you would do like 0.1, right? And if I got here now and do that again, and I'm just hitting the I key to show it, right? That's, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not that. That's that's way faster. I'm sorry. <clears throat> what I meant to say was this would be increased. You could either increase this here to take longer to drain something down, or in the actual function for <clears throat> where you're draining the thirst, you could change the amount that it's draining. Yeah, I confused myself there for a second. I was like, wait a minute, that's going way too fast. So if we did it like every, you know, every ten seconds or whatever, you know, you could do that or or whatever it is. Now you could also in these in these functions that you're doing in here um, in the character or whatever these amount values could be supplied by some other variable, and you could you could have a thing that says, okay, if I'm uh, if I have a certain magical item or property or whatever, I could increase the amount of longevity for the character. So I could say my thirst drains less frequently. I can set that timer by using values and variables of a nature like that. So this is, again, a high-level concept on this whole thing, just trying to show you the skills and, and techniques you're going to need for eventually putting together this whole thing with the RPG that we're going to make. Um, but hopefully this isn't too confusing. Um, I did a couple of modifications here just to make this work, and I'll walk through it just again real, real quick. We did our... I and J down here to show our thirst value. So we changed this. This was just for us to plug it in and make sure that it's working. We went into the AC attributes and we created a new 
function in here called modify thirst made sure that whatever amount we're sending in is getting added to the current thirst value and in this case we're adding a negative one to it in our other function when we call it out and on the graystone player character then we said we wanted to create a function to drain that thirst and then we want to call this function using this set timer by function name over here and what this basically replaces for you anytime you want to do some type of like a delay or a loop or a whatever um, or whatever it is instead of doing something like what a lot of people would do in the past is they would come in here and say I want to do an event tick and you know on event tick I want to come out of here and get some type of a delay node and you know and then I want to come back and do this other thing again you, you don't want to you don't want to do it this way right you want to replace these types of things with timer by function name and uh, the other thing too is on like a on a tick event the basic general rule of thumb is don't put it on a tick event and if you want to use a tick event try and use a timer by function name and if you can't do it that way maybe you're going about it the wrong way in the first place but if you are going to have to use a tick event don't do anything that's heavy math or complicated on that tick event okay so anyway this was about set timer by function name and we're using that to atrophy or drain a value over time okay my name's tc made with tc gaming hopefully this helps you out and i'll see you again in another rpg video coming out very soon take care and have a great night